Hello everyone and a blessed Easter to you all. This is Pastor Jonathan Karen from Jerusalem Lutheran Church in Morton Grove. While we're disappointed that we can't gather all together in God's house to celebrate Easter, we can rejoice from our homes that Jesus has risen from the dead. Jesus died and rose for us so that sin and death could be defeated and so that we could have eternal life. By faith, we share in the victory that Jesus won over sin and death. And we rejoice today of the, with the wonderful hope that Jesus' empty tomb gives us. Let's begin our Easter service today by singing the hymn, Jesus Christ is Risen Today, hymn 157. As believers in the risen Lord, 
Let us confess our sins. Father, we confess before you and before one another that we are unworthy to stand before you. We have sinned against you and against each other. We deserve only your wrath and punishment, now and for eternity. But we seek forgiveness in the name of Jesus. We put our faith and trust in him and in the blood he shed for us on Calvary's cross. Forgive our sins and empower us by your Spirit to live a new life. Rejoice! God, our Heavenly Father, hears our cry for forgiveness. In love, he sent Jesus to live a perfect life and die an innocent death in our place. He has removed our guilt forever. The cross and empty tomb prove it. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. He, he is, is risen indeed. Alleluia. Let us pray. Almighty God, by the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, you conquered death and opened the gate to eternal life. Grant that we who have been raised with him through baptism may walk in newness of life and ever rejoice in the hope of sharing his glory. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to him with you and the Holy Spirit, be dominion and praise now and forever. Amen. Amen. Our first lesson for this Easter day comes from the Old Testament prophet Job, chapter 19, verses 23 through 27. This Old Testament believer suffered greatly in life, and yet he lived with hope because he knew that he had a Redeemer who would rescue him from sin and death, and that one day he would enjoy eternal life. We too make these words our own, a reading from Job chapter 19. Oh, that my words were recorded, that they were written on a scroll, that they were inscribed with an iron tool on lead, or engraved in rock forever. I know that my Redeemer lives, and that in the end he will stand on the earth, and after my skin has been destroyed, yet in my flesh I will see God. I myself will see him with my own eyes, I and not another, how my heart yearns within me. This is the word of the Lord. At this time, the choir will sing, Christ has arisen, Alleluia. And you're invited to join along by singing the refrain.
today comes from Colossians chapter 3, verses 1 through 4. Jesus died and rose for us, and now he rules from on high. And we are encouraged in these words to set our minds on Jesus and things above, looking forward to that eternal life that will be ours through him. A reading from Colossians. Since then you have been raised with Christ. Set your hearts on things above, where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. For you died, and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you will also appear with him in glory. This is the word of the Lord. Gospel of John, chapter 20, verses 1 through 18. And our sermon for today will focus on the second part of this account, where Jesus appears to a woman named Mary Magdalene and restores her hope. This is the Gospel of our Lord. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the entrance. And so she came running to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one Jesus loved, and said, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we don't know where they have put him. So Peter and the other disciple started for the tomb. Both were running. But the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent over and looked in at the strips of linen lying there, but did not go in. Then Simon Peter came along behind him and went straight into the tomb. He saw the strips of linen lying there, as well as the cloth that had been wrapped around Jesus' head. The cloth was still lying in its place, separate from the linen. Finally, the other disciple who had reached the tomb first also went inside, he saw and believed. They still did not understand from Scripture that Jesus had to rise from the dead. Then the disciples went back to where they were staying. Now Mary stood outside the tomb crying. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and saw two angels in white, seated where Jesus' body had been one at the head and the other at the foot. They asked her, Woman, why are you crying? They have taken my Lord away, she said, and I don't know where they have put him. At this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not realize that it was Jesus. He asked her, Woman, why are you crying? Who is it you are looking for? Thinking he was the gardener, she said, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have put him, and I will get him. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned toward him and cried out in Aramaic, Rabboni, 
which means teacher. Jesus said, Do not hold on to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. Go instead to my brothers and tell them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news. I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. This is the Gospel of our Lord. Our next hymn is, I Know That My Redeemer Lives. Hymn 152, stanzas 1, 2, and 5. quite depressing. If you're hungry and you open up your refrigerator and see that it's empty, you probably feel pretty bummed. And you kids out there, imagine on Christmas morning and you get to open up your Christmas gifts and you see that every box is an empty one. You'd probably feel it's the worst Christmas ever. Empty things are the pits. Today we consider something that was empty. The empty tomb of Jesus. And it doesn't make us sad or depressed. Jesus, who once was dead, is alive. His tomb is empty. And that gives us a reason for hope. The resurrection of Jesus changes the way we look at everything. It changed, changed the life of a woman named Mary Magdalene. And for the next few minutes, I want all of you to put yourself in her shoes. I want you to see what she experienced on that Easter day. I want you to feel her sadness and despair and see how it's very similar to the sadness and despair that we experience in this fallen world. 
But more importantly, I want you to see the joy and the hope that she has when she realized that Jesus was alive again. And know that that hope that she had is your hope, too. We find Mary Magdalene at the tomb, and she's crying. She's shedding tears of despair. For some time now, she had been following Jesus. She regarded him as her teacher. And he had done great things for her. He had healed her from demon possession. He had taught her many things. And more importantly, he had taught her about how sinners like her could have peace with God. He had made many promises. He had said so many good things. He had performed miracles. But now, Jesus was dead. And for Mary Magdalene, this world had become a very cruel place. A place of broken promises. A place of dashed dreams and big disappointments. It seemed as if there was no reason for hope anymore. Jesus was dead and all her hopes had died with him. How can you hope in someone who is dead? It's no wonder she was crying. And on top of that, it appeared that somebody had stolen the body of Jesus. Oh, she was truly in despair. Have you ever had moments like Mary Magdalene did? Moments in which you felt the world had become a very cruel place? A place of broken promises, unfulfilled dreams, and huge disappointments? Maybe you feel that way right now. Maybe there are some personal struggles that you're dealing with. Health troubles, finances are tight, or someone you loved or trusted turned their back on you. And the list could go on and on. You know, a lot has changed since last Easter. This Easter is like no other. Our world is in fear of a global pandemic. The world economy is on edge. Churches are empty this Holy Week and Easter. And it can be easy for us to think, God is dead. There's no hope. When life suddenly takes a turn for the worst, it's so easy for us to think that God isn't there. Or that if he is, he just doesn't care. And then we look at our own lives. We look at our past. And we know the wrongs that we have done and the good that we have failed to do. And we know that we can't change that. And we may despair. Or we grieve the loss of a loved one. Or we fear our own mortality. And we can easily feel hopeless. Just like Mary did on that Easter morning. And so we look for hope, we search for it. But what hope does this world have to offer? Not very much. This life is all there is, many people say. You better grab what you can while you can. Just make the best of it. You only live once. Just think positive. But that kind of thinking never leads anywhere good. It just leads to more disappointment and despair. And it turns us into very selfish creatures. Glorified animals, really. A life that is just me-focused and here-focused is a wasted life, which only leads to greed and loneliness and ultimately hell. Well, you can put a happy face on it, 
but it's just a mask that covers up all the hopelessness. Can you imagine going up to Mary Magdalene on that Easter morning and just telling her, Mary, just pull it together. We know that Jesus is dead, but just think positive. Look at the bright side. You can cherish the memories. I think she'd probably turn to us and say, thanks, but no thanks. That doesn't really help. And yet that's the best hope that our world can offer. Just to tell somebody to be optimistic and look at the bright side of life. But telling people just to think happy thoughts without giving them a reason for hope is really silly, actually pathetic. It just makes the hopelessness and despair all the worse. It's like telling a drowning man not to worry, but never throwing him a lifeline to grab onto. You can't tell people to have hope without giving them a reason for hope. You know, Mary Magdalene found hope on that Easter morning. She looked into that tomb and realized it wasn't empty after all. There were two angels there. And they said to her, Woman, who are you looking for? Why are you crying? They have taken my Lord away, Mary said, and I don't know where they have put him. And then she turned around, and there was Jesus himself. And he said, Woman, why are you crying? Who are you looking for? And she was so overcome with grief that she didn't even realize at first that it was Jesus. She thought he was the gardener. And she said, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have put him, and I will get him. At this moment, Mary still believes that Jesus is dead. She still doesn't have any hope in her heart. But Mary was wrong. She did have hope. And that hope was standing right there. Jesus said to her, Mary. So many times before, Jesus must have called her by name. And now she heard that familiar voice call to her again. And she looked up and realized that it was Jesus. And she was so excited, she calls him my teacher. And she grabs Jesus. She doesn't want to let him go. Yes, Jesus was alive. Her hope had been restored. And this hope so filled her that she just could not let go. Jesus tells her that she didn't need to cling to him physically. He would return to his father, but he would always be with her, as he would be with all of his followers. And she was to go to tell the rest of his disciples that he had risen from the dead, so that they too could have that same hope. And so she quickly goes and she shares the good news that she had seen the Lord. She shares the hope that's in her heart. What a turnaround for Mary. One minute God is dead and there was no hope, and now there is. Jesus is alive. God is not dead. There is hope, reason to be joyful and optimistic. Her hero was alive. You know, we all love heroes. Consider the popularity of superhero movies. But most of our heroes are fictional characters, aren't they? We only read about them in books and see them in movies. And even the heroes that we have in real life often disappoint us, and we know that they can't do everything for us. But there is one true hero, one who is real. The only true hero is Jesus who lived and died as our Savior and rose again and lives forevermore. And he offers you real hope. You know, as we walk through life, we come to a fork in a road 
And there are really only two ways to go. One way is to live your life on your own terms. To go your own way. Without God, without Jesus. And eventually you will realize that this way leads to nothing but death. It's a trail littered with unfulfilled dreams and broken promises and dashed hopes. A dead end. But then there is the way of Jesus. And he promises to walk with you the whole way. He never breaks his promises. He knows your needs, your dreams, and your hopes. And he promises to fulfill them beyond what you could ever imagine. My friends, trust in him and walk with him. In our lesson, Jesus said, Mary. And every one of us could substitute our own name there. Jesus comes to you. He comes to you in your lowest moments, when you think that there is no hope. And he says to you, why are you crying? And then he reminds you, calling you by name, saying, I am alive. I'm your Savior. I have risen from the dead. And in those words you find hope and joy and comfort. And then, when you look at your past, and you realize the wrongs that you have done, and you know that God is a holy and righteous God, and you deserve his punishment for the wrongs you have done, Jesus again calls out your name and says, I died for all of those wrongs that you did. I paid the punishment when I offered my life as a sacrifice for you. And God the Father has accepted that sacrifice. And my rising from the dead is proof that he accepted it. My rising from the dead assures you that you are forgiven for every sin. And you have peace with God right now. That's real hope. And when you are afraid of the future, afraid of the direction that our world or your personal life is taking, Jesus again comes to you and he calls you by name and he assures you, I am with you. I will never forsake you. And even your troubles, I will work them all out for your good. That's real hope. And when you grieve the death of a loved one, and when you fear your own death, again Jesus comes to you and calls you by name and assures you with his promise, because I live, you also shall live. Death has been defeated. Eternal life is yours. You can look forward to a life that never ends, a life in perfect joy. That's real hope. You know, it's true that empty things are often the pits. From empty gas tanks to empty refrigerators, from empty wallets to empty checkbooks, from empty promises to empty dreams, from empty hearts to empty lives. But my friends, we know that the empty tomb of Jesus is definitely not the pits. It's a reason for real hope. The empty tomb filled Mary Magdalene's heart with an incredible sense of joy and peace and comfort and hope. It changed her life forever. And, Je and Jesus is just as much alive today as he was on that first Easter morning. And the hope that you receive from the Word of God is just as real as the hope that Mary received on that day. Mary returned to those disciples 
a different person. Her life was changed forever. She was a woman of hope. As you go about your life in these difficult days, may that same hope that she had in her heart live in your heart too. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Amen. And now the peace of God, which goes beyond all understanding, guard your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. At this time, we join together in prayer. Heavenly Father, you have not forsaken us or left us to our own destruction, but you kept your ancient promise to send a Savior. We praise you for his perfect life, his innocent death, and his glorious resurrection. Because of your faithfulness to your promises, today is a day of victory. Jesus, you are our Savior. We praise you for carrying out God's plan of salvation. Your resurrection is undeniable evidence that you have triumphed over sin, death, hell, and the devil. Because of your resurrection, today is a day of victory. Holy Spirit, we praise you that through the gospel you have led us to know and believe that Jesus is our risen Savior. Today we say confidently, as did the angel, He is not here, He is risen. Preserve us in faith, raise us to newness of life, and continue to lavish on us the blessings of this day of victory. Triune God, drive away our doubts and fears. Help us to continue to hope in you. Kindle our hearts a love for all people and equip us with both the will and the words to tell others that Jesus has indeed risen from the grave. Use us to share the message of the empty tomb so that others too may rejoice in Jesus' Easter victory. Lord of life, give hope to those in despair. Bring back the wayward, grant healing to the sick, and comfort to all who suffer. Give hope to all who stand at death's door. Comfort all who mourn the loss of a loved one who has died in the faith in the risen Savior. And comfort each of us with the assurance that because Jesus lives, we too will live. Remind us all that the death of a Christian is not a defeat. Because of Jesus, it is a day of of victory. We make all our requests in the name of our Savior who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. We close our Easter celebration by singing stanzas 7 and 8 of hymn 152, I Know That My Redeemer Lives.
join with us today on this Easter celebration, rejoicing in the wonderful hope that we have now that Jesus has risen from the dead. We invite you to continue watching our Facebook page and YouTube channel, channel for upcoming services. And members, keep checking your emails for church-related announcements. We also want to make sure that our members continue to have an opportunity to give their offerings to support the ministry here at Jerusalem. You can send your offerings into the church by mail. And if you're visiting today and not a member, we're simply glad that you joined with us and we pray that the message that you heard was a blessing to you. You can learn more about us on our webpage, www.JerusalemLutheran.org. And may our gracious God continue to uphold you, strengthen you, and give you peace. And we continue to serve with the unique message of Christ's love as we worship, grow, and serve. May our gracious living Lord be with you all.